Hello there, and welcome to another edition of Real Estate Therapy. And I'm really excited today because I have with me um, a peer and friend, David Oliphant, who um, I, I don't get to see nearly enough. David, would you like to introduce yourself um, to our listeners and viewers? You bet. And thanks for having me on. So uh, as Cynthia said, I am David Oliphant or Oliphant or <laughs> Elephant, as you can imagine growing up in school. But thanks for having me on the show today. I'm excited to chat with you. I am too. And I love the name Ocean Blue because it's so perfect for Half Moon Bay. Yeah, I love it too. And when it first kind of came about, I was really insistent on calling it Ocean Blue Real Estate. I'm like, that's the full name. You've got to say it all. And then as we've kind of expanded and opened a little art gallery, and then we just opened a pho restaurant, which has the word blue in it, of course, it's Blue Dragon Pho. Mm -hmm. um, we've kind of shortened things up to Ocean Blue, which is interesting. It's kind of come full circle. I, I really like that. Well, I, I wanted to call my agency Kindred only, just Kindred. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Everybody who consulted me on that said, no, it has to have SF in it for San Francisco, and you have to mention real estate. So it's Kindred SF Homes, um, but you wouldn't believe how many calls I get from um, doctors and long-term care people because Kindred is a very common name for um, elder care facilities. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, they sell houses too. <laughs> I think when, when I first really got to know you a little bit and, and um, was when we appeared on a panel together at a real estate conference, and I forget exactly what the topic was, but one thing that I remembered you saying, and this is what I want to talk about today, oh, Lord. is Lord. you were talking about I mean, I might have this wrong, but how much love there was in your life, how you'd always been, I think, close with your family and your parents, and there was always a lot of love to go around. Now, that's what stuck out in my mind. I mean, it really inspired me. Am I remembering that correctly? What is there a lot of love in your life? <laughs> there, there has been, and there still is. I'm so fortunate. And, you know, I don't know that I recognize that until probably until my late forties that it wasn't everyone's experience, right? Like we had the very Mayberry growing up, right? We lived in Reno, which was a small town at the time. My parents both were educators. There were five boys in my family, but it was still kind of uh, the time of traditional values is the wrong set of words, but um, traditional family, right? Like it was really important that we sat down together every single night for dinner. Right. And if we didn't, we're like, well, where's where's that brother? Where's that brother? Like, what's happening? Um, and we would we were raised in a Lutheran church, right? Not wildly religious, but some foundation. And so we would hold hands every night and we would take turns saying a blessing or a prayer for our meal. And then we would just, you know, laugh and get into trouble because there were seven people in my family around a very small, tight table. Really? There five seven. Boys, we, yes, five boys. <laughs> and we were raised in a three bedroom, two bath house. <laughs> people, so you, you can do the math. Um, but we all just, I don't know, we all got along. We had incredible love from our parents. And I think clearly it's made me who I am today because as I tackle new projects or businesses, people are like, well, what makes you think you can do that? And I'm like, because I was always taught that I could do what I put my mind to. Like, I don't even understand your question. <laughs> right. <laughs> because my reality was, well, of course you could do that. Like, figure it out, go do it, fix it, get up, start, do something about it. And that was just the way we were brought up. So we were all very close and still are. And, you know, my parents are still living and still live in the same house. Been married That's... 66 years. Wow. Wow. So we still have that same sort of feeling, but that was just always my reality. Right. And then love with, with you know, friends. Um, partners and spouses and it's just been a life of love but it's humbling because i recognize now that's not everyone's experience no it's not it's not everybody's experience i i i think that 
um, you know, we were only four of us, but we had a really, we had a nice family life when I was growing up. Um, and uh, I think that that helped prepare me for knowing how to act, you know, how to behave with other people, just basic courtesies and thoughtfulness toward others. Um, but, you know, in becoming, I don't think that people would necessarily think that being able to access love or gratitude is the thing that would make one a successful real estate agent, mm. right? Mm. It would be like sales acumen. And um, I like to, one of my favorite things that I like to say is that um, if you're working with a successful or a real, a successful real estate agent who really knows what they're doing and is doing the job right, then nobody loves you like your realtor, not even your mother, <laughs> not even your mother. Um, you is what I like to say. My mom. Yeah, you might have to arm wrestle my mom for that one because she'd be like, David Jeffrey can do no wrong. I love him. Um, which she she would do. And, you know, I think I, I, I'm not going to pretend that that is a skill that I honed, right? And I'm not going to tell your listeners, like, these are the three things you can do to be better at that. I was, was just really fortunate because I was taught to love myself first, right? So I always, that's how I presented myself into the world. I think some people mistake it for ego, right? Or mm -hmm. an over, an over amount of confidence, but I just, I just knew who I was and I was taught to appreciate that. And I felt okay about all that. And, you know, I'm a very different person. I have lots of things that might not be okay for some people, right. but well, that you're... just organically presents you to differently to your clients, right? When you walk in the room, knowing who you are and they can tell you're not pretending it changes everything. Right. I, it's, I, I mean, I have some of that those qualities myself. And um, I think it's one thing that usually endears me to people pretty quickly. But for example, when I first met my, my partner of what, 12 or 13 years now, um, he found me to be annoyingly <laughs> cheerful. <laughs> like, I get that, yeah. He was like, get out of my face, right? woman <laughs> right Isn't that, funny? that was yeah. you know that, that was a long time ago it was a i knew him a long time before we uh hooked up but uh yeah he was not impressed with my level of self-love and confidence <laughs> isn't that funny that's so interesting i think you know some people i've learned to understand that some people i think are also just born optimistic people mm -hmm. right i think it's just in their dna so yeah. you couple being really optimistic with being self-assured and knowing who you are and loving who you are. I'm sure personalities like ours are a lot to handle. <laughs> right. It's uh, are you, do you think that op being optimistic is a trait that um, is beneficial for realtors? Do you think that? Well, you know, when I first got into the business and I tell new agents now um, it's, and I've been a lot of different careers, but it's probably one of the most volatile careers I've ever had. Because one phone call, one phone call can change everything. Right. right. One phone call, one text, one email. So unless you're ready to respond to that in a healthy way, um, it can be very ups <laughs> upsetting, right? Because right. deals come together and fall apart over, you know, a five word text. Um, so that could be shocking to the system. So I think being optimistic about, or at least being agreeable to, well, then something this happened for a reason, something better is around the corner or the next house will be the right one or the next client will be the right one. Right. Sure. I think it helps to be optimistic about that because it's kind of like fuel for your soul as a professional real estate agent, because you yeah. have to get back up. You know, you have to put your feet back on the ground and you have to go again. It's a little bit like being an actor, I imagine, in that, you know, we do get a lot of rejection and it can be for a very arbitrary personal reason that has nothing to do with our expertise or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think I've certainly, I've certainly won business that maybe I had no business <laughs> going after. <Everything>. Right? <laughs> sure you did. Sure you did. Yeah. But yet, like I've learned to not um, 
if I have, let's say I have a listing proposal out there and I'm waiting to hear back uh, and I see an email come through late at night from that person, I will quickly get out of my Google Mail because I've learned not to look. Don't look until I'm ready to look. Yeah. So if it's right before bed, I don't want to know. Yeah, I think that's smart. I just got to the point where I finally turned all my email alerts off because I wasn't having the discipline I should. And, you know, if I'm sitting at home with my partner and I've had, you know, a second glass of wine, I shouldn't be working. <laughs> and I tell the agents on my team all the time, if you've had that second glass of wine, you should not be working. No. Right? Don't answer the email. Don't answer the text, whatever that might be. But no. Yeah, that takes a lot of self-discipline in this business for sure. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I'm, I'm one of these very early to rise and very early to bed people now, although that was not my nature originally. Um, but, um, you know, I like, I now like getting up early in the morning because then I feel like I'm way ahead of everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> but at about, uh, you know, seven at night, I'm starting to fade. And that used to be when I would just be starting to think about the night ahead. Right mm -hmm. at seven. Oh, it's I, an aging time. I read. I read something. I heard. I heard or read something the other day about um, what was it? I'm surprised every night at ten o'clock to find out that it's six o'clock. <laughs> Especially now that it's getting darker earlier too. It's really hard. <laughs> exactly. I am with you. Well, so back to the to my my theory that nobody loves anybody better than their realtor um i i i think that boundaries aside for receiving emails or texts we're on 25 8 we're available to our people i mean you are pretty much right yeah, and I or like the you? analogy of 25-8 because that's really what it is. I tell people if my phone is on, I'm working, right? And that's that's the case. No one cares that I just sat down for dinner. No one cares that I'm taking the dog out for a walk and it's my first time home in 10 hours, right? That those are all things that I don't even share with my clients. I just answer the phone as if I'm sitting at my desk. Right. Um, because that's what they expect. So, yeah, certainly a lot of your life is not your own, but that's also an agreement you make, I think, when you get into the business, if you're going to do it full-time and be a professional. And right. there are some people who are part-time, right? I think the market's been a little bit harder on them because they're probably having to find other ways to make a living. Um, but if you're gonna be in it full-time, yeah, you need to answer the phone just like you're sitting at your desk regardless of what's happening in your life. Yeah, and you do. A challenge. I mean- But that's the, why everybody loves us, right? Yeah, the, everybody loves us except, do you, I don't okay, I'm outing myself here. When I get a message, like let's say that I, I'm trying to communicate with another agent and I get a message back that says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm at my son's graduation or I just sat down to dinner and I think, what's wrong with you? You need to <laughs> It's not Good awful. For you. Yeah. You know what? I So I, I'm going in my, what, 11th year, I think, of real estate. I will do that if it's not urgent, right? If there's something urgent needs to be addressed, of course, I'm going to step away and address it. But if it's something about, you know, can you send me this form? I'm missing it. Well, I think that can wait till I'm done with dinner. Absolutely. So I've been getting better about that. And people still love us. Yeah. I mean, way I, I, there've been so many times, I mean, I can think back to family occasions or, uh, you know, I remember once being, um, heading out on a remote hike, a backpacking trip for a couple of days and my mobile coverage was about to end just as we went over this one pass. And I was trying to very quickly um, advise my clients about what their counter offer should be. Oh, right. And, and yeah. I think we were tell, like conferenced in with the agent who was covering my business. And then at one point it just, bam, was gone. Oh, and so, gosh. but you know what? At that point in my career, which was probably, I don't know, I've been at this more than 30 years now. So this was at least 15 years ago. I was at the point where, okay, mobile coverage is gone. Whoops. I can't remember the client's name. I don't know what the property was. Completely, I, I learned how to disconnect that part. Yeah. Yeah. So that then when I was on, 
I could really be there fully yeah. for my people. Like, uh, you know, people will call and say, I'm really sorry to bother you on Sunday afternoon. I'm like, I'm working. Yeah, it's a Monday for us, right? Sunday's a yeah. Monday, yeah. Call me anytime. For sure. Please keep calling me anytime. <laughs> right. Tell your yeah. friends to call me anytime. <laughs> Tell everybody right. you know. Um, exactly. But, you know, like, I think that there's a certain quality that arises in, and it, maybe it comes out of our fiduciary obligation to act for our people as if I think of it as acting on their behalf as if I was them. Mm. And um, there is a loyalty and a care there that's so far beyond most of what I witness in um, a lawyer, a, a, a CPA, um, even my, you know, a therapist. Like the therapist is going to say, um, okay, our time is up and that's going to be it. My, my time, you know, I try to keep track of my time, but there's no, there's no timer. There's no retainer. I think that makes our responsibility even greater and even more difficult for us, however, because, you know, people who are working and not being compensated unless there's a transaction closes. I think the temptation is a little bit higher to try to get that transaction closed. Yeah. Right. So when you start making comments, decisions, choices, answering questions, recognizing you're representing your client, but it could potentially change the outcome. It makes it even more challenging. I think for someone to be com always completely ethical, honest, and retain that fiduciary responsibility representing their client when there's options, right? right? And I like to always give my client options, but I remember it's a way to sum it up. I remember when I first was getting into this business and I thought, well, everyone kept saying, talk to all the brokerages, talk to all the managers, see where the best fit. And so I did, I went around and I remember meeting with one brand owner and I'm like, well, what are you looking for? Like, what are you looking for in a sales guy? And he said, well, I'm looking for somebody that will do anything to get the transaction closed. Whoa. Oh, and really? Said, wow. Wow. Well, that's, I'm sorry to say this isn't going to be a fit, right? Yeah. Because that was not how I, what's not what I was told our jobs were, right? No. We were representing our clients and if it meant the transaction wasn't going to close, then so be it. But because then we're not getting paid, that's what makes us very different than other professionals that are getting paid, right? Yes. Attorneys are counting every minute and all those people are, are literally charging us by the moment. Therapists, lots of people I've worked with. Right. Doctors. So, the doctors, really? yeah. So it makes our challenge even greater, I think. Well, I think it, it also, I mean, there's this distrust of real estate agents that's fairly prevalent because they think all we want to do is make a sale, right? That, yep. that you, you hear that. Now, I kind of laugh at that whenever I hear that now because it's so opposite of my personal experience. Um, all I want to do is get to the truth for whatever, for whomever I'm talking with, right? I want to help them find their best path forward. And I always trusted that if I did that, then the money would follow, yeah. right? If it wasn't this person, they would recommend me to somebody else, right? I think that you are absolutely right. And I believe that that is probably a learned behavior, right? I think you have to, or maybe once you finally are start getting paid from some transactions and you feel like you have a little more um, wiggle room or whatever it might be that you can easily say no to that transaction if it's not the right thing to your client. Right. Um, I think that comes with time and having some business, but it was, you're just starting. It's really, it's really difficult. You've yep. got to remind yourself of that every day. And this is one of the, this is one of the, the um, arguments in favor uh, if you're a consumer is to find an agent who is very successful, who is getting paid, who has a big book, who's had a, a consistent track record, because they, they are less likely to steer you um, wrong. I don't know if that's not the right word. Wrong is not the right word. 
where, of course, I always, always think that the rookie, the right rookie is going to work harder, possibly. Like I always say, um, you know, when you're talking to a top producer, you're trying to decide who's going to represent you, say, on your first purchase. You may not want to work with a top, top agent. You want somebody who's a little hungrier. Mm-hmm. Um, but hungry can get in the way of good advice. Mm-hmm. It can. And I think then we're back to how we started, right? We're back to kind of being that authentic personality and knowing who you are and then knowing what your responsibility is in the transaction. I mean, people, you know, Ocean Blue didn't exist, what, three years ago? And now we have 13 people on the team and we're thriving in our community. But people always ask me how the business was built. And for me, it was built by doing every single open house I could get my hands on. Because I, I authentically had a way of connecting with people, right? And people felt that. So, um, very few people asked me how long I'd been in the business or looked up my transactions. They felt the connection and the responsibility that I had to them and that I was committed to representing them. Yeah. I mean, I think that the human connection is, is such a big part of it. And I, I don't find myself working with clients for whom that isn't a factor or it isn't a a subconscious factor. I mean, I know that when I conduct open houses now, I come to it when I greet people, I try to be mindful to really look them in the eye. And, and I try, I try to visualize an actual heart connection going back to love. I think about my heart kind of meeting them and me seeing them, really seeing them. And I want them to, uh, so I'm trying to make that invisible connection. They may not be aware of it, but I find that when I have that in my mind, this is my sales technique, is Mm -hmm. that if I have that in my mind and heart, and I'm really trying to visualize that, I almost always have a successful connection. Um, It's very rare that somebody can resist that. (laughs) Right. <laughs> they have to they have to come in with their shield up, you know. Yeah. I think I probably unknowingly do something very similar, but I recognize it more of being like an open heart or kind of an open book or safe. You know, yeah. I like to present myself as safe to people because I am. Um so we might it's probably a very similar thing because it is about kind of energy vibration or heart connection or what it might be, but um People see it. Come on. People recognize that, right? Yeah, they do. I mean, and I think a lot of people have been accosted. You know, they've Mm -hmm. gone to an open house and it hasn't been safe. (laughs) They've been they've been asked 48 questions. They've they've not been able to even look at the room without somebody, (laughs) you know, pointing out the Carrara marble or whatever. And um and so that they, they flee, you know, they actually run away because there wasn't any room for them in the house. The room, yeah, they the have whole, to get away. <laughs> right. It was just taken up with this, this salesy pitch kind of stalking the person <laughs> through the house, right? Yeah, instead of the connection. Do you, when you work with new agents on your team, or if you, if you take new agents, um, is that something that you coach them on? So, uh, it's kind of a, 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 I can almost have to go back a little bit, even before you asked your question, because we are, we, I am very strict about hiring for culture first, mm-hmm. right? So we have a lot of branded wear, right? This one says ocean blue real estate on it. And my kind of barometer is if I don't trust somebody wearing this, in town and i'm not with them it's it's an immediate no it's a it's it's automatically a no i'm sorry there's no space on the team right now um because i'm i'm committed to keeping a healthy culture and caring for people and making sure that people feel cared for on the team so um a little bit of that i think we is already happening because we've hired the right people you know i'm really proud of the fact and we had a a holiday party last night, but you know, a lot of people on the team said very complimentary things, but I'm most complimented by it that we have some of the nicest people in the business 
that work here in Half Moon Bay, and we've had 0% turnover, not one. So I'm, I'm flattered by that because I feel like we've put the right group of people together to be the brand, right? I'm not the mm -hmm. brand, yeah, I came up with it, but you know, all those people are really Ocean Blue Real Estate. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to do a lot of that coaching because I think it was done before we even invited them to be part of the team. But yeah, yeah. if somebody's new, um, certainly I'll have that coaching and like, give that direction to them. But like I said, I, I think people on the team already have it when they got this far. Right. Well, what they've got is that, I mean, one thing that they've got is that they're going to be a, a decent human being who knows how to <clears throat> respect others and hold them in positive regard and who um, isn't going to go buy a bottle of malt liquor and hang out there on the sidewalk in front of 7-Eleven in their ocean blue sweatshirt, right? Yes, I would think. <laughs> I would hope I would hope not. They had a bad day, right? That would um, be quite horrifying. Yeah. I think I drive my my team a little bit crazy sometimes uh, because I often will begin our weekly or monthly meeting with a, a drop in. We'll do a visual um, visualization, uh, guided meditation, mm -hmm. or at least, you know, some ishes and alms, something to get present to actually be here. And, um, you know, because we're on Zoom a lot of the time, because uh, we don't always meet in person, you know, I'll say, you know, please close your eyes, but, you know, I can sneak a peek. <laughs> And I see, I yeah, I see who's got their eyes open and who's actually, you know, checking their email and stuff, right? Right, that's but, very funny. Or looking down at their text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, you know, I get it. I understand. It's not for everybody. Um, I'm perhaps a little bit woo-woo. Uh, I mean, if, if I had my druthers, David, I would begin every client interview with, with some kind of a drop-in meditation, and then we'd... Uh, then I'd want to hear their life story and right. I'd want them to tell me their, their house story. Um, you know, what are their dreams and, you know, what are their, uh, how do they see themselves living in, in their new home? I don't want to hear how many bedrooms <laughs> they want. <laughs> or what right? the marble is. Yeah. Yeah. I want to. And of course, I'm sure that's client specific, right? Some who are very analytical just want to get down to it and others who allow space for that relationship piece that I'm sure that's nobody has really allowed hard. me to do this <laughs> <laughs> let's just be clear <laughs> you know it's kind of like this invisible it's just like this thing that I hold for them I'm trying to well you you when you're listening to people talk about what they want and so often buyers in particular I find don't know what they want yet not really um, so in that con one of the things about being the agent is I'm witnessing, I'm hearing them begin to articulate what they want and to bring that out. Do you find, do you find that people usually lead with a list of amenities or are you hearing something different? Yeah. So it, typically I find that people lead with a list of things that, um, they absolutely will not have, right? They don't want stairs. They don't want a busy corner. They don't, they have to have two bedrooms they, you know, or three bedrooms. It can't be a two plus extra space. So typically it's all the things they've ruled out. But to your point, they know much less about what they are looking for. Right. And I have had clients say, well, how am I going to know? And I really believe that when you I tell people that you will feel it, you will know when we walk into the right property, if you can see your life unfolding there, or if you just absolutely can't. And I think that's less about square footage of bedroom and bathroom count. Um, I wrote a blog one time called, uh, it's on our website, but it's called uh, Deal Killer or Dream or Memory Maker. Uh-huh, right. Because we moved into a house with three sets of stairs and we had an old 17-year-old dog at the time. And I'm like, oh. this isn't possible. This is a really bad idea because <laughs> he can't get up these stairs. This oh. isn't reasonable. And of course we came to the reality that he's not going to live forever. So do we make a short term decision based on the, you know, rest of the life for this dog? But the blog came from the fact that 
Uh, and he lived till 19. His name was Blake. I still have his collar hanging up in my car. Oh, Blake. Oh. Blake Dill, little Blake. Came from Muttville, Senior Dog Rescue in San Francisco. But some of my best memories were carrying him up the stairs to bed every night. Oh, that's thought, so sweet. That's, well, I thought, isn't that fascinating, right? That in, in my real estate brain, stairs were a no. When I had to say goodbye to Blake, the stairs were part of the best memories I had of him. Because he would just sit at the bottom of Wagon's tail and look at me. <laughs> and I'd pick him up and up we'd go to bed. So I thought, you know, that's a really good lesson for buyers. Mm -hmm. Which is why I wrote a blog around it. Right. Because for me, it was a hard stop. And it turned out to be one of the things I love most about my relationship with that dog in that house. Which I wouldn't that, have had if we had a one story. That's such a great, I mean, what a, what a gift mm. to, to have, have that. I mean, just, that's just a wonderful, that's a wonderful memory, first of all. And it really illustrates so beautifully the difference between like the wish list and, and the, the dream making, the memory making yeah. reality. I mean, a lot, have you experienced this? A lot of times when I'm talking to a seller, I'll go into the house and there will be I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example, like the most God awful looking built in banquet you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and like, really, it has to go. Like yeah. the first thing any designer would do is obliterate it. And the homeowner clearly loves it. And maybe it's something that when they first looked at the house, they said that has to go. But then when they moved in and they started mm -hmm. hanging out, and having breakfast and having coffee and having arguments and, you know, right. having these beautiful, having this life there, it became the thing, the number one feature of right. the house. That they found comfort in, yeah. Right. And yeah. yeah, and we run across that, right? And, you know, I just, I <laughs> always ask people if they ask my opinion on what we need to be done to ready a house for the market, well, I'll go room to room. And sometimes I will just say, well, how do you feel about that? bank yet what's the story with that like have you ever thought about not having it and kind of honing some information from there um and if somebody really is fond of it i always remind people that we're readying the house for to sell it and for them to move out not for them to spend the next couple of years so there are going to be some hard decisions to make but we have to think about the buyer um, that doesn't have a lot of vision right i've had buyers walk out of houses because the paint color was wrong and i'm like right. wait that's the easiest thing to change nope let's go right. so you know if those buyers were out there that that don't have that vision. So I always encourage the seller, we're trying to create that vision, right? We're trying to shape their thinking. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes those are hard, hard conversations to have, but remembering they're not going to stay in the house sometimes makes it easier. Yeah, like the collection of wooden ducks on the shelves, <laughs> right. you know, like, no, not everybody's into that. Yeah. Hard to believe. I, <laughs> I have a house for sale right now, and it's one of my favorite clients and one of my favorite houses ever, but she collected skeletons bones of dead animals she found along the way and she mm -hmm. had them exhibited and displayed in a fascinating way and it was the coolest thing very clearly a very artistic woman but i'm like we're gonna have to pack the bones so i don't know those have got to go because not everyone's going to find that as appealing as you and i from an artistic perspective and yeah. you know she understands that and kind of laughed but i mean the bones the lord of the rings memorabilia the mm, yes um I don't know, 49ers jerseys, <laughs> right. right? These are things yeah. that gave us pleasure, maybe, but really, because the buyer is not buying the, they're not really buying the reality of the house in a way. Mm -hmm. They're buying their projection of it. Of their own it's, life. Yeah, like what right. their own life looks like in it. Right, so there's got to be space for, you know, if you have the wooden ducks on the wall and the buyer is actually into, I don't know, um, praying mantises, no. <laughs> right? You gotta, you gotta make, you gotta have a blank space for the praying mantises to appear. Yeah, you do. I always tell people, listen, the best way is if you could move out and we could stage your house. Yeah. You no, know, and if they're able to go for that, then that's truly, I believe the best way to represent someone's home, but. Not everyone has that luxury, but yeah, there has to be space for people to fall in love with what they think their life might be inside those four walls. I mean, every now and there's an exception to that. And that's the person where it already looks like 
mm. you know, perfect designer ready yeah. magazine spread. And I'm actually, I'm worried about those people. I'm worried about their, <laughs> their health, their psychological health. Just so much time is putting into making it perfect. Right. And it's like, yeah. do you actually live here? Do you right. live into this space? I mean, I, when you, when you go to see a house for the first time, how often do people apologize to you for what you're seeing? Do you it's get that? With, yeah. Sellers do it all the time, right? Because they're typically in the middle of organizing or packing or painting or divorcing or whatever it might be. Right. So it's typically kind of in shambles, but you know, they forget we're in people are in people's homes every single day. Right. So I tell people, I see this every day. This is nothing. Don't even think about that. Let's talk about what's important. Yeah. In fact, not, not, not only do I see this every day, you won't believe some of the things I saw yesterday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, I had, I had one home. We ended up thankfully working with, you know, one of our contracting companies to be able to flip the home, but it was the first home I thought I'm going to have to hire a hazmat team. Oh, when I walked into uh, it because I'm like, this is not healthy. Yeah. Like it's, it was really an unhealthy environment, but was that it, was interesting, right? Was it mold and stuff like that? Or, I mean, it I recently mold. had a place where we were scared to walk in cause it was just, you could see the mold everywhere. Yeah. And you know, whether there was like mildew or something, there probably was, uh, we did ended up with a complete remodel on it, but no, it was the fact that the house had been left empty for a couple of years. Um, and a family member that had a very unhealthy lifestyle had been kind of squatting in the home for years mm -hmm. and cared nothing about the property, nothing. Oh. Yeah. And they had been evicted by the time we finally kind of went in to do our thing. So you can imagine the mess. That's, that's so sad. I mean, that's a, a part of our job is just being face to face with human beings, mm -hmm. yeah. human beings. Well, all their fullness and those were sellers that were very vulnerable uh, because it was two other family members right it was their father's home who had passed away so they were not only dealing with the passing of their father and evicting a family member but now they were selling the family home that had to be completely remodeled because it was in such poor shape but through the process they knew and understand it and clearly i would say those are people who loved me more than they probably thought they might at the end, their their family always had these brown tiles on the kitchen wall, but like every 12th tile was a decorative tile, right? There was like a rooster, there was a loaf of bread, there was a head of lettuce, there were some mushrooms. And I, of course, made the joke about the mushroom tile. I'm like, that's golden. Like, I think that's amazing. Like, when we demo this kitchen, we have to keep the decorative tiles. Mm -hmm. um, they framed it. They framed the little mushroom tile. Oh. And they gave it to me at close. <gasps> Oh, that's Which so I was so sweet. That is so sweet. I love, I love that. I, well, I just, that was the love, right? They felt cared for and protected and safe for that transaction. And they wanted to give me a piece of their family home to. And they felt they seen, that. they felt yeah, really yeah. seen. And, and I mean, a lot of times that's what people are looking for to be seen and maybe to be approved. Mm -hmm. Right. Or at least acknowledge for the feelings they're having around what's happening. Right. I always say that in real estate, most times something's happened. Right. Like that's full stop. That's a complete statement. So if someone's moving out of their house, some big event has happened. There's been a divorce. There's been a passing. There's been a new job. There's been a new baby. There's been whatever's happened. So people are already dealing with that. Right. Right. That big event. <laughs> and they may or may not want to be selling their house. This may not be a happy occasion. So I think they have to be seen. They have to be acknowledged. They have to be heard to make, to have them feel like they partnered with the right person and, you know, someone they can trust to get them through this process. Yeah. It's, it's, I've, I've pitched listings where there was somebody who I could see was really tortured, really going mm -hmm. through such a hard time. And often I would emerge from those meetings thinking I'm absolutely the right agent for this job because I get that part. And then I would see them list with, with the flashy salesy yeah. agent and just think, wait a minute, <laughs> did I miss something? You know, did I, uh, but I think there's an agent for everybody. 
Right. I think there is too. And I think some people, when they're in a really vulnerable state, they do go after the flashy lure, right? Like I think of a hungry fish, right? That's the thing that's the most flashy. They're like, well, I'm attracted to that. Instead of really listening to their intuition and going with someone who's going to still do a great job for them, but has a little more heart connection. I also recognize that not everybody wants that heart connection, right? Some people just aren't vulnerable enough to allow it to happen. Right. Again, the, you know, me being too cheerful, <laughs> or to, and we're back. <laughs> you know, wanting to do a visualization or kumbaya moment. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and I think some people want to be told. They want to be mm-hmm. told. They want to have certainty. They want to have an authority in charge. Um, yeah, I have people all the time when they ask me for my opinion, they say, well, you tell me. Like, you're the professional. You do this every single day. And I'm like, I'll tell you exactly what I think you should do, but you have to know the choice is yours. Like, I am representing your wishes. I'll give you my advice, but you have to recognize it's just advice, right? right? I'm trying to tell you what the next steps we should take, but you're the one that's going to make that decision. And not everybody wants that. They want me to tell them what to do. Right. If you do ABC, then the right. result will be X. Then in real estate, we know that's not true, right? Because there's so many variables in real estate. There's so many things that need to be safeguarded in the process. I know. It's... it's which I love. It's fascinating, but well, it's always uh, you know there can be those pleasant surprises, and then the the nasty ones like my Parkside listing, uh, you know, which is uh, can be a little bit on the foggy side. Um, mm, yeah. Weather wise, you mean? Or... Yeah, weather wise, <laughs> yeah. and you know, what a delight when the first open house comes, and it's a glorious sunny day, and you sunny. can smell the ocean, and the sun's out, and it's like yes. And then, but then there's the, the, you know, the same listing in a different situation where um, the morning that we're going to show the property, the city shows up, puts do not park here signs that say we're going to be digging up the street for the next six months. Awesome. Wow. (laughs) Ouch. How did we not find that out? Yeah. Yeah, We didn't see that one coming. Um, Well, I think that I think that anybody who is looking for someone to help them is very lucky if they find you or if they find me, I'll go ahead and say Either it. one of us, heart connected people. Right. Somebody you who know, cares. If, well, somebody who cares, uh, but is also smart and articulate and understands the business because it's a very tricky business. So it's a, it's a fascinating combination to find, I think, in the right person. But do I have to be good at math? Is that required? Well, nowadays you've got your, you've got this, right? This right, thing that's that right. Help us get there, but I'm gonna use my calculator every single day. Yeah, I've got that miracle device that fits in my pocket that gives me access to everything a person would ever want to know, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's different than uh, back in the old days, <laughs> where agents would run paper contracts across the lawn. Oh my gosh. That's what I, I, I wrote offers on the hood of my car. I know. You know, when they were a couple pages long and now they're 16. In ink. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Right. Then you'd like that while I was writing the offer, the buyer would see other people going in to look at the house and they'd increase the price. So I'd like cross it out, put in the new price. They'd initial it. (laughs) Isn't that funny? Negotiations. So um, I think we've, we've had a pretty, I would love to talk with you again and bat, bat this around some more or a different topic, but. Let's um, do it. I love to talk. You know that. Oh, oh, and you're so good. You're such a good talker. You're a good listener too. Oh, thank you. You're a good listener too. That's a hard skill that pays attention. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hard, that's a hard skill to learn. Um, yeah, most people are thinking about what they're going to say next instead of trying to answer the question, right? Right, and they don't hear. Right, exactly. What did you say? <laughs> I know, exactly. Could you repeat that? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't listening. I was looking to see who was coming in through the door over there, right? Happens, is, right. Exactly. Is that a better prospect for me? <laughs> Should I be over there? Yeah. Um, so I like to end um, each episode with a real estate story that might be enlightening, horrifying, exciting, entertaining, heartbreaking, you know, whatever. Do you have a story that comes to mind today? Yeah. 
So you know my heartbreaking one is probably, of course, about Blake, my little dog, right? Mm -hmm. But that's it's a, it's a good story. I think probably one of the times I've been most embarrassed but had to recover right away. Um, <laughs> Hillary, who's one of our founders of SIDE, uh, used to live in the same community as I. And when they decided to move, she hired me to sell her home. And I thought, mm -hmm. ooh, the pressure's on. Well, right. this woman right. helped found the company, and now I'm selling her home. So great. Uh, very excited about that. We do a complete marketing package, which includes a video. I like being on camera, so we do a full like three or four length minute video. Well, that week I happened to have two listings on the exact same street, right? So I think the street name was exactly the same. The house numbers, of course, were different. But we shot them the same day, too, because everything was just happening at the same time. So we did all these great packages. I built the website. I sent it to Hillary and I said, hey, so like, here's your, here's the package to sell your house. What do you think about it? And she goes, oh my gosh, the video is so good, but you say the wrong house number. I said, what? She said, in the video, you said the address of the house of the street. I'm like, oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I thought of all clients, the founder of our company, I messed up video so thankfully when i said the house number i was walking downstairs and i dipped my head so we oh. pulled the audio we switched the two pieces of audio in both the videos great but it was a little embarrassing to have the founder of our company tell me i had her address wrong yeah well and, she, and she's so intimidating to begin with right oh my god she was like just fix it i don't care she was amazing but i thought oh, really how many you know hundreds of homes have i sold and that's the one i get wrong no, that so, should. We just laughed about it and fixed it. That shows your excitement for the listing. And there you go. Reasons. See? And look at I'm all so that you did. That was so taken. Oh, I love it. So that's kind of ironic. You know, there's lots of sad stories, funny stories, horrifying stories, but that's probably one of the most lighthearted fun stories. Well, well, and and she and you did successfully sell her home, and I know she has a she's living somewhere else now and loving it, and you made that her progress possible. Right? That all happened. Yes, that's very true. It's so funny too, because the people who ended up buying it were buyers of mine, but they were very intellectual people and were not open to the heart connection at all. Mm -hmm. So we ended up parting ways. They ended up buying it with another agent. Oh no. <laughs> oh, hi. Nice to see you again. That's an interesting, there, there's a, that's a story. That um, yeah. It's a little bit like, boy, that gives me an idea for another show topic the sort of like, uh, you know, how um, relationships with agents really have to, you can't have an open relationship. They have to be monogamous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Monogamy in real estate. Yes. There's your, there's your title. Yeah. So um, thank you so much, David. You're welcome. Can I tell people how to find us? Oh, yeah, please. Our thank you for reminding are... me that. Yeah, you're welcome. It's uh, Ocean Blue Real Estate in Half Moon Bay, California, and we're right on Main Street, right? The only real estate brand on Main Street in downtown Half Moon Bay at 643, uh, or we're online at oceanbluerealestate.com. And if you go by, you can stop in to get some noodles right next door. You can buy some art because we have a local artist collective and we rep about 120 local artists a year. And then right around the corner is the, the city's best pho called Blue Dragon Pho. I love it. Well, I'm, I'm going to come down and get some fun and buy some art and drop in and visit when you're there. Please do. I would love so. to see you. So now I'm going to say again, thank you so much, David. This has been great. It's right. been truly, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for asking me. Thank you.